Good morning, Wasteland. Oh, if you're like, hey, your shirt says that, yeah. There are custom art cross out Good Morning Wasteland t-shirts on the merch store, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about movement parts. This is in our series of Why You Suck at Building Part 2. A big thank you to Commodore1983, aka Opal, from our very own Discord, also provider of a lot of the music you hear in my videos. You can find the link down below to his music. Really helped put this together for newer players to so just talk about movement parts and some really basic tips on how to use them effectively when planning your builds. So movement and cross set is important because knowing how to pick the movement type, how to mount them to your frames, and what strategies vary between different types of movement can make or break your battles. So we're going to have a lot of details. We're going to break it up into different parts. We're going to talk about generally tactics, how many, perks, matching weapons to movement. We're going to go over wheels, steering versus non-steering, how to frame it up, placement of frames. Uh, we're also going to talk about mixing movement parts, when to do it, when not to do it. So first of all, let's jump into the number one question you should make when you're designing a vehicle, which is how many wheels should you put on it? Now you see a lot of new players, they're going to start out and they're only going to be running four wheels on the builds. You lose one, you're done. You lose two, you're definitely done. So one of the early decisions you have to make is, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to maximize armor? Do you want to check on tonnage and fill out your whole tonnage bar? But you don't always want to do that. Um, but sometimes you do need all your tonnage. But you also want to make sure that you're not slowing your acceleration and adding on needed power score. Because as we add wheels to a build, we are reducing power. See, power minus 10%. Um, but this one here, they've got quite a few wheels so that they can run around because this vehicle needs to move. Otherwise, it's done. It's just dropping cap cans and being a Cerberus. That's what that rig does. So another important question you want to be careful of is what is the perks? Anything that's a special rarity or above has a unique perk that makes them useful for specialized builds. These can be great choices uh, once you can afford them. If you're consistently losing wheels to cannons, well, you might want to try something else. So let's talk about that. So let's say you're losing wheels to cannons all the time. Well, what would be a good wheel choice for you? Well, the APC wheel is going to have explosion resistance of 25%. So if you're always getting your wheels blown off by the cannons, maybe try out APC wheels. They also look cool as well. Maybe you're losing your wheels to melee all the time. Well, maybe you want to go ahead and give shivs a try. Can't give you a little bit of resistance there to shotguns and melee damage. Also, just so you guys know, um, Lunar Wheels do have pass-through similar to Grills. You take a look, they've got a 50% pass-through ability uh, on damage. However, you don't often see people using Lunar Wheels outside of doing art builds for cars. Next up, we're going to talk about matching your speed to your movement parts. So let's say you uh, go ahead and get a movement part like the small tracks, which are in a really good spot right now. If you haven't used them, you haven't been able to afford them, you should try them out. So they have a maximum chassis speed of 90 kilometers per hour. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the cabin you put on there has a max speed of 90 or higher. So obviously here, the Griffin, we've got 100 kilometers per hour speed, so we're good with the Griffin. But let's say you were to look at some other cabs. Okay, no, get in there. 100 kilometers an hour, that'd work. Harpy, 100 kilometers an hour, that would work. A lot of cabs are going to be fine. But this one's only got 85 kilometers per hour. If you were to stick the call cabin on there, you'd be wasting 5 kilometers per hour of your small track speed bonus. So let's take another look. Let's say you pick a cabin, for example. Let's say maybe the Nova, and it only has an 80 kilometer per hour max speed. Well, you're not going to maybe want small tracks. Maybe you're just going to want to go with hardened tracks. They're going to give you a little more tonnage, HP, and resistance, and their speed's 75 kilometers per hour. So you're going to be a little bit better off with that, although we are we are losing that 5 kilometers per hour for sure. Um, but there are some exceptions. Uh, wheels have no maximum speed, which is you know nice bonus to them, and engines and co-drivers can affect your maximum speed as well. So you want a movement part for the perk, not the speed. So decide on a build-by-build -build basis what movement part is going to synergize best with your cabins and your weapons. 
All right, next up, we're gonna talk about matching your weapons to your movement parts. If you're gonna be using something like shotguns, like a sledgehammer, for example, and you need to close in to your enemy because they have a range, which is only one bar, super limited range, you're gonna want a fast moving build. If you're a new player, Growl Cabin is a great cabin to start off with because it's got speed. So it's got a max cabin speed of 100 kilometers per hour. We're gonna be go ahead and put wheels on it. They don't have a max speed, so it's not gonna slow us down. We're gonna be able to close with our target swiftly. What if you choose a weapon that's fixed angle? Now, obviously, if you're a new player, you're probably not gonna have tsunamis, but there are other fixed weapon cannons. So if you're running a fixed weapon cannon, you're gonna be better off you know, using something. Because look, I can only move couple of degrees left and right but if I have legs I can strafe left and right which is a really good strategy if you're really close to being able to hit the target rather than turning fully you can just strafe left or right works on hover as well but I'm able to quickly bring guns to bear using ML 200s big rooms hovers meat grinders to a lesser degree any of those are gonna give us the ability to get fixed weapons on target. So matching weapons to movement parts are very important. Now next up, we're gonna to begin to talk about wheels. This is by far the most common movement part at low power score and it's the cheapest for new players. So we're gonna talk about which wheels to choose. So choosing which wheels are best for you is more important than you might initially think. They all weigh different amounts and they have different sizes. They also have different power drains, so 9%, you know, 8%, 5%. You're gonna notice the smaller the wheel, the less the power drain. We got up to 10% on the large wheel. And you're also gonna notice you know, some of these, once you get into the specials, so once you get above blue, have some perks and some damage resistance, but you're gonna have you know, just different sizes, different tonnages, different abilities. Now, as we get into the epic wheels, you know, we're gonna have perks like buggy wheel, reduce speed requirements for bonus activation by 40 percent so if you're running parts or engines or any perk that needs speed to charge it up or movement this is going to get a lot done a lot faster using the buggy wheel for example hermit once you reach a speed of 70 kilometers per hour the wheels damage resistance so this wheel has damage resistance based on speed bigfoot probably one of the most popular wheels out there because look at that tonnage plus 2250 and that durability of 445 a lot more durability than you're going to get on a medium wheel 110 um, but also has a perk increased travel counter by up to 50 percent depends on how many bigfoots you have so if you have a perk that requires you to go a distance to tick that off bigfoot's going to help with that now omni wheels are the only wheels that are going to allow you to strafe that is their important perk um, so it's always important to think about what you want you know aesthetics sure but as anyone who's good at cross out knows, aesthetics go out the window pretty quickly for functionality. Cross out has its own kind of beauty and just all different shapes and sizes. Now, I probably should have put this at the beginning of the video, but let's talk about steering versus non steering wheels. It's a general rule of new player build, you want at least six wheels. But this is an example of how not to do steering. We have too few steering wheels here. Now, steering wheels are great, but they only have half the tonnage of non-steering wheels. So to reduce power score and keep your tonnage up, you're gonna want some non-ST wheels on your rig. But let's take a look at the turning radius with this basic build using four non-STs and just two STs. Yeah, it's a pretty wide circle. So how's the correct way to do that? Well, this has been true for a long time and it's still true. You're gonna want STs in the front and the rear. Okay, that's gonna make this build turn a lot tighter. So there's our old turn radius. Now let's take a peek. Look how much tighter of a circle we can make with STs on the front and the back. So that's an example of how you're gonna wanna do that. Next up, we're gonna wanna talk about frames. Frames are super important, how you set up your frames is probably the first thing you're going to do on any build is set up the frames. Here's an example of how not to do it. What's bad about this? You lose any frame on this build, you lose two wheels and you are crippled. You lose this one, you're down two wheels, you're totally done. This is how not to do frames. So how should you do frames effectively? You're going to want redundant pieces. 
You'll notice each movement part is attached to two frames. Lose one, it's fine. Lose one, it's fine. Lose one, it's fine. So finding a way to attach each movement part to more than one frame or having redundant frames is an important way that you can improve your build and keep you out there fighting longer on the battlefield. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about mixing movement parts. Generally, mixing movement parts is either a good or a bad idea depending on how you wanna do it. Putting wheels and tank tracks on the same car is a bad idea because it's gonna remove the wheels ability remove the ability of the tank tracks to reverse at full speed and the tank tracks were also going to limit the top speed of your wheels so each one of these is having a negative effect on the other so if you find yourself needing more tonnage just use a cab with more tonnage or add a tonnage engine so make sure that you're also not installing movement parts that can strafe uh, with movement parts that can't i mean we can we got wheels i mean we could probably overcome a lot of these wheels with this one because they're just simply not on the ground but you get the idea. This is for demonstration purposes only. However, is there ever a time you want to mix movement parts? Sometimes doing that can be beneficial. Installing non-steering wheels onto a car with ML200s or big rooms, it can give you guys a little bit more tonnage for less power drain. You'll see we've got a power drain of 20% on big rooms, only 6% on these Hermits. But the Hermits are also going to give us a tonnage of 1700. While not quite on par with the big rooms, it's pretty close. And these guys have a power score of 275, while well, these guys have a power score of 190. So if you're a new player and you've ever seen wheels that don't even touch the ground on hovers or something with legs, and you're going, why are they on there? Um, the player's just squeezing some extra tonnage into their build uh, without limiting it. But one of the other joys of Crossout is just doing silly mix and matches. You've got to experiment with this, find what works for you. For example, here we got a decent combo. Um, just running uh, small tracks with Omni wheels right here. Those aren't gonna hurt each other. That's gonna be just fine and still effective for this retro build right here. Um, but you can also do some silly things like we can do horizontal mandrake. And you're like, what? Why does it? Why does it look like that? Well, the hovers are gonna tip it over. The legs are gonna help us aim. It's gonna scoot on the meat grinder. You're like, that's a total monstrosity and it's breaking the game. But you know, it's also one of those things that just is what makes cross out cross out. When you find a way to kind of game the game using different movement parts, it can be a lot of fun. Um, you're also maybe have noticed you'll see people with legs running a meat grinder. You know, that's going to give you extra tonnage. Um, also protect from people getting underneath you and wedging you. So it's going to do a little bit of damage to them as well. You also may have seen combos of stallion wheels with big room legs. Can make for kind of an interesting change here just to get us that angle on our porco cannon really get it to shoot up as high as we want but guys that is part two in our series why you suck at building just giving you guys a basic overview of movement parts wheels frames and how to build them if you're a new player out there i hope this helps you and i hope you found it useful and if it does like and subscribe for all things cross out I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Big thank you, Opal. Mr. G, out.